Welcome all to Newton's Laws of Motion class 14 in which we will discuss how to solve block on block problems. So over here if you are considering that there is a block of mass m1 which is kept on another block of mass m2 which kept on a surface. That surface may be a smooth surface or it may be a friction surface. Now over here if you are exerting some force let's say if I am exerting a force F on block of mass M1 then we need to find out what about the value of acceleration of M1 what about the acceleration of M2 and what about the value of frictional force between M1 and M2 and what about the value of frictional force between M2 and surface so for solving such type of questions we need to follow uh, some particular steps so I'll discuss what are the uh, different steps that we need to follow so our first step is to find the direction of friction. So in question, they will give the direction of applied force. Let's say an applied force F is acting on block M1. Then first we need to find out what about the direction of friction acting on different surfaces. So for the calculation of direction of friction, just consider a point on block M1 and just consider another point on M2. Now just assume that there is no friction between these two surfaces. Assume that there is no friction between these two surfaces. So if there is no friction between these two surfaces, due to the applied force F, this block M1 will move towards right or we can say that this point will move towards right relative to a point on M2. So if friction is present, then friction will definitely oppose the relative motion. So we can say that M2 will oppose the motion of M1 and it will exert a friction along this direction. Let's say this friction is represented by F1. And friction is also having equal and opposite reaction forces. So if M2 is exerting a force F1 on M1, then M1 will exert equal and opposite reaction force on M2. So this will be the value of direction of friction acting on M2. Now, because of this frictional force F1, this block M2 will move towards right. Again to find out the direction of friction between M2 and the surface we can just consider two points over here. Because of F1 this point will move towards right. Then if friction is present the surface will try to oppose the motion of M2 while exerting frictional force towards left. Let's say that is equal to F2. So this block is going to exert equal and opposite reaction force on the ground that will also equal to nothing but F2. We'll take uh, another example for it. Assume that there is a block of mass M1 and there is a block of mass M2 and assume that uh, in question it is given that f applied force is acting on M2. So again we can just consider two points over here. So always applied force will try to dominate or it will try to decide the it will decide the direction of uh, motion of object. So because of this applied force F, this M2 will try to move towards right. So this point is going to move towards right relative to point on block M1. So if friction is present, then this frictional force exerted by M1 is going to oppose the, value friction, oppose the direction of movement of M2 while exerting a friction along this direction. Let's say that is equal to F1. So this friction is having, having equal and opposite reaction force. So if, if M1 is exerting a friction force on M2 towards left then M2 will exert equal and opposite reaction frictional force on M1 towards right let's say that is equal to F1. Same thing we can repeat over here if you want to find out the direction of frictional force between the surface and the block M2. So because of this applied force this M2 is going to this point is going to move towards right then with respect to point on the surface it is moving, moving towards right so frictional force exerted by the surface will be towards left let's say that is F2 then this block M2 is going to exert equal and opposite reaction force on the ground. Let's say that is also equal to F2. It may be somewhat difficult to understand. That's why I'll take some more examples. So in some question, they may give combination of let's say three blocks. And if I'm exerting a force F over here. So we'll follow the same technique. Just consider two points over here. Because it's applied force F, this point will try to move towards right. Then this M2 will try to exert a frictional force opposite the direction of its displacement. Let's say that is equal to nothing but F1. Again, to find out the frictional force between these two surfaces, we can write it as 
if m2 is exerting a frictional force f1 on m1 m1 will exert equal and opposite reaction force on m2 let's say that is equal to f1 towards right and because this frictional force this point of contact will try to move towards right so if it is trying to move towards right then we can assume that this m3 is going to oppose this one with the force take it as f2 and equal and opposite reaction force is going to act on m3 that is equal to f2 again we can just consider two points over here because of this f2 frictional force this point is going to move towards right then if friction is exist between these two surfaces then surface is going to exert a frictional force of f3 on the block m3 towards left and equal and opposite reaction will be exerted by the block on the surface that will also be equal to nothing but f3 so we'll take one more case for a better understanding of this let's say force f is acting on block m2 so first we'll assume that there is no frictional force between these two surfaces just consider two points and because of the supplied force f if this point is trying to move towards right then if friction is exist then this m1 will try to oppose the uh, motion of m2 while exerting a frictional force along this direction let's say fn and equal and opposite reaction on m1 that is also equal to fn again we'll consider two points because of the supplied force over here you can observe that two forces one is supplied force another one is friction applied force will dominate then friction or applied force will decide the direction of motion so this is going to or it is trying to move towards left then frictional force on m2 will be towards left that we can take it as nothing but f2 this m2 is trying to move towards right so frictional force will be towards left and equal and opposite reaction acting on this one let's say that is also equal to nothing but f2 again we can just consider two points over here and because of this f2 this point will try to move towards right then frictional force on m3 exerted by the surface will be towards left let's say that is equal to f3 so this surface is going to exert equal and opposite reaction force on the block m3 is going to exert equal and opposite reaction force on the surface let's say that is also equal to nothing but f3 so this is a way we'll find out the direction of friction in different situations if you are not getting this one please uh, revise this videos and uh, try to understand step by step how we are writing the direction of friction in different situations now we'll discuss about the second step in this we have to find the acceleration of system while assuming that blocks are moving together that means consider the situation that a block m1 and m2 are kept on a surface and assume that a force f is acting on the surface and consider that the coefficient of friction between m1 and m2 is equal to mu and assume that it is a smooth surface with coefficient of friction is equal to zero so now we don't know that whether this m1 is going to slide over m2 yeah we don't know whether m1 and m2 are going to move with the, together with the same acceleration yeah they are going to move with a different acceleration so first we'll assume that these two blocks are going to move together then we'll find out the value of its acceleration if they are moving together first by our step we can find out the direction of friction so just consider two points over here now because of the supplied for this point will try to move towards right so m2 will oppose the motion of uh, m1 while exerting a frictional force along this direction let's say that is equal to f and equal and opposite reaction force f on m2 now we just assume that the uh, surface of m2 and uh, the ground is frictionless or that surface there is no friction is acting so this will be the direction of friction now the second step is to find out the direction find out the acceleration of system while assuming that <coughs> these two blocks are moving together so if they are moving like a single system then we can consider that the net force acting on the system is equal to nothing but uh, f1 and it is moving with an acceleration a so we'll assume that its acceleration is equal to f divided by m1 plus m2 so this will be the value of acceleration if they are moving together now in the third step we need to calculate the frictional force required to move the blocks together with same acceleration that means we just calculated it as if the two blocks are moving together then it is going to move with an acceleration that is equal to f divided by m1 plus m2 now from the free body diagram of uh, block of mass m1 or block of mass m2 we can find out what about the value of frictional force required for it so if i am going for free body diagram of m2 because only one force that is frictional force is acting on the object 
and if it is moving with an acceleration a that is equal to f divided by m1 plus m2 so according to newton's law we can write this net force should be equal to mass into acceleration that is m2 into f divided by m1 plus m2 so we need to find out what about the value of frictional force required so that both the blocks are going to move together now on the fourth step we need to calculate the maximum possible value of frictional force between the block that means we know that the maximum possible value of friction is nothing but coefficient of friction into normal reaction so between the first surface two surface we can write weight m1 g is acting downward and normal reaction n1 is moving upward so frictional force over here is nothing but we can take it as nothing but mu into m1 into g this is the maximum possible value of friction now we'll come to the conclusion part that is if the maximum value of friction is more than the frictional force required to move the blocks together then the system will move together with the same acceleration and if the maximum friction is less than the frictional force required to move the blocks together then different blocks will move with the different acceleration to understand this we'll take some examples some numerical examples so consider a situation that there are two blocks of mass 1 kg is kept over another block of mass 2 kg and the coefficient of friction between block 1 and 2 is nothing but 0.4 and the uh, friction between 2 and the surface is taken as nothing but 0 so the first step is we need to find out the direction of friction so on the first step we will just consider that two points over here and this point uh, we will assume that there is no friction between this point uh, block 1 and 2 so this point will try to move towards right if there is no friction so if friction is there point 2 will oppose the motion of uh, 1 so the frictional force on 1 will be along this direction let's say there is F so this one will exert equal and opposite reaction force on uh, second block let's say there is also equal to nothing but F now we will move to the second step second step is we don't know whether these two blocks are going to move together or they are going to move with a different acceleration so we will assume that these two blocks are moving together with an acceleration A then we will find out what about the acceleration of this system so we are exerting a force of 3 newton on the system and if it is moving with an acceleration A so you can write acceleration is equal to force divided by mass force is nothing but 3 and acceleration and mass is nothing but 3 so we can write the value of its acceleration is 1 meter per second square now on the third step we will find out what about the value of frictional force required for moving with this common acceleration for that purpose we can take the free body diagram of uh, object 1 or object 2 so if I am drawing the free body diagram for this block of mass 2 kilogram so over here a frictional force of F is acting towards right and other forces are not acting and we assume that it is moving with an acceleration of 1 meter per second square so we can find out the value of this frictional force we can write this frictional force F is equal to nothing but m into a that is 2 into 1 so we'll get the value of frictional force is equal to nothing but 2 newton so this is the frictional force required for the blocks to move together now on the third fourth step we'll find out what about the maximum possible value of friction we know that the maximum possible value of friction we'll find out from mu into normal reaction the value of mu is given as nothing but 0 0.4 and normal reaction between the surface is nothing but 10 newton the weight of 1 kilogram object so we can write the maximum possible value of friction is nothing but 4 newton now we'll come to the conclusion that over here as the maximum possible value of friction is nothing but 4 newton and the friction required for the blocks to move together is nothing but only 2 newton that means these two blocks are going to move together and the frictional force will be equal to nothing but 2 newton so if they are asking what about the acceleration of block 1 we will take it as nothing but 1 meter per second square and what about the acceleration of 2 that is also equal to 1 meter per second square and what about the value of frictional force acting between the block that is equal to 2 newton this will be the final answer now just consider another example in which we are having again a 1 kilogram object and 2 kilogram object and take it as the frictional force the value of coefficient of friction between them is 0 0.4 and there is no friction between these two surface or we will take the value of coefficient of friction is equal to 0 
and our aim is to find out what about the value of acceleration of one kilogram and this two kilogram block. So we'll again continue with our uh, step by step procedure. First step is we need to find out the direction of friction. So for the calculation of direction of friction, we'll consider two points over here. And due to this applied force of 15 Newton, this block mm, will try to move towards right. Then the block two is going to oppose its motion. So this block two will exert some frictional force towards left on block one. So this block one is going to exert equal and opposite reaction force on block two. Now in the second step, we don't know that whether these two blocks are going to move together or not. So we'll assume that these two blocks are moving together. Then we'll find out what about the acceleration with which they are moving if they are moving together. So we can write acceleration is equal to net force is 15 and total mass of system is nothing but 3. So we can write it should move with an acceleration of 5 meter per second square. Now in the third step, we'll find out what about the value of frictional force required for the block to move with an acceleration of 5 meter per second. So I'm just drawing the free body diagram for block 2. So on this block 2 or block of mass 2 kilogram, a frictional force F is acting and we just assume that it is moving with an acceleration that is equal to 5 meter per second square. So for this acceleration, the value of F or the value of frictional force should be equal to nothing but M into A. Over here, the value of mass is nothing but 2 kilogram. Acceleration is nothing but 5. So the value of frictional force should be equal to nothing but 10 Newton. Now we'll find out what about the maximum possible value of frictional force between the surface by using that equation mu into N. Here the value of mu is nothing but 0 0.4 and the value of normal reaction which is nothing but 10. So you can write the value of frictional force is going to be nothing but 4 Newton. Now we'll come to the conclusion that over here the frictional force required for the blocks to move together is 10 Newton but the maximum possible value of friction is only 4 Newton. Then these two blocks are not going to move together because for moving together required a friction of at least 10 Newton. But over here this is exerting, it can exert a maximum of only 4 Newton. So they will not move together. Then we need to find out what about the value of friction over here. Then maximum possible value of friction is going to act that is equal to nothing but 4 Newton. So frictional force will be equal to 4 Newton. Now we can find out what about the acceleration of this block 1 and block 2. So if you want to find out the acceleration of block 1, we can draw the free body diagram for block 1. On block 1, there is an applied force of 15 Newton is acting and there is a frictional force is acting and we got the value of frictional force as nothing but 4. So you can write this acceleration will be equal to nothing but 15 minus uh, the force acting in the opposite direction that is 4 divided by mass we can take it as nothing but 1. So it will move with an acceleration that is equal to nothing but 11 Newton. Now we can draw the free body diagram for uh, block or block of mass 2 kilogram. There the force acting is nothing but the frictional force and the value of frictional force is nothing but 4. So you can write it is going to move with an acceleration. Let's say that it is moving with an acceleration A. By using that equation F is equal to M into A, we can write A is equal to F divided by M. Here the value of F is nothing but 4 divided by mass 2. So it is going to move with an acceleration of 2 meter per second square. So this will be the final answer. That means acceleration of block 1 is nothing but 11 and uh, 11 meter per second square. So this is not Newton. This is in meter per second square. And the acceleration of 2 kilogram block is nothing but 2 meter per second square. And the value of frictional force between the block which is nothing but 4 Newton. So this concept is also somewhat uh, difficult to understand. So try to watch this one or two times and try to concentrate on the examples that we discussed. Hope so that you'll be able to understand whatever the things we discussed in this class. If you are having any doubt, please contact. Thank you.